All right, so this is part two of the tutorial on how to build this interaction. So the way the interaction works is I've got these panels here on these images and I can click on them and get different information. So the first thing we did in part one was we built the infrastructure. So let's go ahead and go back to that slide. And the infrastructure basically was built at the slide master level. So we go to view, slide master, and we can see here's our slide master. Now I deleted all the other ones in case you're wondering why it looks a little bit different. Um, so at the slide master what we want to do is insert all the content that's persistent. So the gray image is going to be persistent, the black background, and this white content box is persistent. Uh, the other thing that's going to be persistent is the hyperlinking because we want to be able to put the hyperlink on the master slide and this way the hyperlinking works across all those slides that are using uh, this layout right here. So um, let's go ahead and build out the hyperlinking. Now let's go backwards here. So I'm going to close out the slide master. One of the things I did is in outline view I went ahead and titled the slides and you notice I moved the slide titles up on top in my master layout. And the reason is this kind of serves as a description of the slide without interfering with my slide content. So we're going to come back to slide master. We're going to actually build out our hyperlinks. So I want a hyperlink for this panel, this, this, and this, and this. So usually what I do is I just use the regular blue box or whatever the shape is and I'm going to create my hyperlink now. You could fill the whole shape. It really doesn't matter. I, I usually don't just because I don't want the hyperlinks butting up against each other. So I've got my hyperlink shape here. A couple things I do first is create the hyperlink. So I hit Control K and that will open up the hyperlink window. Now what I want to do is link this to a place in the document. So in this case it's going to be the intro panel. Now um, all the panels are going to look the same so that's why having the title really comes in handy. So I've got that there. Now I'm just going to copy this and then I can put one here. And again this is a good example of where I don't care. It doesn't have to cover the entire shape because you're generally going to get the idea that you can hyperlink here. Most people kind of move to the center of the shape anyway. Um, so you can make it a little wider if you want to but I try not to get them to overlap so this doesn't cause issues. So the same thing. Control K. This one's going to go to 1. I'm just going to duplicate this. Move it down. Um, oops. Let's do Control K. This is going to go to 2. Duplicate this. Um, change the shape a little. Control K. That's going to go to 3. And then duplicate this and stretch it out. Control K and that will go to 4. So now all the hyperlinking should work. I usually just keep these blue boxes here just so that I can see um, that there are hyperlinks on here. Uh, and then when I'm ready to publish I'll convert all these to transparent shapes. Now here's a bonus tip. If we go into the selection pane, so go to Home, Select, Selection Pane, it's really good practice to title what you put on the screen. So uh, in this case we've got our picture. Uh, these right here, this is our content box. Uh, this right here is going to be hyperlink. Now this is why I like the title. This is going to be transparent. First off, I won't be able to see it. So being able to see that there's something in the selection pane lets me know there's shapes there. The other thing is I don't know what shapes have hyperlinks and what shapes don't. So um, when I'm working on it, it's fine. When I come back to it later, uh, I might not remember. So I like to title these. So this is going to be link. So this way I know there's a link there and then intro. Uh, this one right here, that's going to be link panel 1. Um, this will be link 2 and link 3. And then this will be link 4. Now you don't have to do this but I can tell you when you come back there's no other way to know that there's a hyperlink on these shapes without right clicking or checking to see if there's hyperlinks on them. By saying that there's a link here I know these shapes have links on them. Now I'm going to go ahead and keep it like this until I'm done. Uh, if you want to uh, you can, you can um, make these transparent or you can a lot of people like to 
uh, format the shape and then they like to make them somewhat transparent so that you can see there's a link there uh, for me it really doesn't matter so I just keep them this way so what we're going to do in the next tutorials we're actually going to go ahead and add some content to see if everything's working